everybody, Brickmaster Films here, and in this video, I will be reviewing the new 2020 Destiny's Bounty. This set has 1,781 pieces, it is recommended for ages 9 and up, and the set number is 71705. I got it on Zavi.us for $130 retail. It releases on August 1st in the USA, it has 7 minifigures. The set is 12.7 inches in height and 17.4 inches in width. Now let's get on to those minifigures. The first minifigure we have up is Zane, and um, he just has this Legacy 1 suit like a lot of other um, Legacy sets. And the face underneath is a happy face and an angry face. And the face mask is also really cool, but um, like I said, from the same Legacy sets from before. And the armor piece is also really cool. It has this um, star thingy. And it also has his golden katana. His leg printing is really nice and it also continues really well onto the torso. He has the golden shurikens of ice and there's also another pair of the golden shurikens of ice if you lose them. Now that is done with Zane. Next minifigure we have is Colt and he comes with the scythe of quakes. And it has the dragon piece and we also have this piece. And there is also an extra of that in the set also. His suit is the same as all the legacy one um ninja except in just in black because it's cool but the only complaint i have about him is that the katana is gray and like the armor piece is gold so i don't know if it just matches but you can always just put a golden katana in there because there are many other extras in this set the face prints on him are the same as the lego ninjago movie face prints next minifigure we have kai the fire ninja and same thing about cole um I just don't like the silver katana, but you can always switch it out, like I said. And the leg printing and torso printing is good. And the face is the same as the Lego Ninjago movie sets. And he has the Sword of Fire, which I believe is the same from the 2011 sets. Here we have Jay. He has the Nunchucks of Lightning, which is made up by a chain piece and these two dragon hilt pieces. And he has a golden sword and a golden armor piece. His face is also the same as the Lego Ninjago movie sets, and he also has his Legacy 1 suit like all the other ninja. Next up we have Samurai X or Nia, and this is a really cool figure since the torso is exclusive to this set. She has a silver katana, or a grey katana, whatever you want to call it. And the leg print is awesome, but it's not exclusive unfortunately. And the helmet piece is made out of three pieces, and this can move up and down. You're not really supposed to, but I mean you can. And her face is the same as the Lego Ninjago movie sets, so like all the other characters except Lloyd. And the armor piece is the same as the Unigami armor piece. And the back printing on here is um, it's kind of neutral, but I still like this figure. And this might be my second favorite figure of the set, considering she has an exclusive torso. Next up, we have Sensei Wu. Really like this minifigure. He came in the golden mech and the destiny's bounty from the lego ninjago movie his hat really cool it came comes in other sets but and his torso print is also really nice let me just remove the beard so you can see it better his torso printing is really nice with some ninjago language on there and it also continues down onto his legs and on the back you have this really nice dragon as you just saw Without the beard, he looks like this, and he has no alternate face. His accessory is a brown staff. I wish it was in the tan color to make it accurate to the show, but I mean, I think this still does justice. And yeah, that's basically all about Wu. The final minifigure we have is Young Lloyd, and he comes with a black fang blade. Really nice piece, but I mean, you can probably just make these out of the pieces you have at home. But the Lloyd minifigure is exclusive to this set. The face print underneath is really cool. It's The eyebrows are a little smaller to indicate that Lloyd is younger. And some people are mad that the eyes were green, but I really don't see a problem with that. And the first face we have is a smirk, and the other face is a pretty scared look. He has this hood piece and the short legs. His torso is exclusive to the set, and he has black gloves. I don't really know why, but if you just remove this cape piece, you can see a 5 on the back. To indicate that he is the fifth and green ninja. This cape piece is also different from the other cape pieces since it is shorter than the other cape pieces. That is all the minifigures. Let's move on to the actual Destiny's bounty. Now, just looking at the ship, it's pretty huge. Um, so I don't even know where to start. Let's just start from the exterior and let's just move all the way down to there. First thing we have 
is the head and I really love what Lego did with the head. They use different colors and it just looks really nice. They have this cupcake piece in gold and this thing can move up and down and the jaw can move really far. But um, yeah, I really like this brick built head. It's probably probably my favorite brick built head of all the Destiny's Bounty, even the movie Bounty. I just think this looks better and I like the red on it. Down here you have this little thing. I don't know what it is, but I mean, it looks pretty cool, I guess. And they have these anchors on both sides, which is really cool. I don't know if you can see, but the middle of the anchor is actually a sausage piece in black. To put the anchors down, you just simply rotate this. And to pull them back up, you simply just rotate it back again. Really cool feature, and I love it. This side is identical to the other side, so let's just review this side. I really love, like, the techniques they used. I really like the tiling, and I just like how there's not a lot of studs showing except these, but these just add, like, a contrast to it, and I really love it. I also really love the red and brown and dark brown color scheme. It just looks really nice and is, it is very accurate to the Destiny's Bounty in the show. As you probably just saw in the first second of the video, you have these giant thrusters and if you pull them down, the other side also goes down with it. And these turbines pop out. I don't even know what these are. A pretty cool feature and if you put them back up, turbines pop back in. When I was building this, this was a pain in the butt to just like line up everything, but I still think it looks very cool and it is very sturdy. It's not just gonna pop out if you I just do that. Like you just saw, it's just gonna stay on there. And there is this play feature on the bottom. So you just grab this piece and if you push it forward, the thrusters go down and up. The one thing I have to complain about is this, is that they're stud showing, but you can just easily cover that up. So no big deal. If I move on to the back, there's this little rudder here. Very small, but I like the inclusion of it. And you have this thing, it can move up and down for some reason. I don't know if it's supposed to do that, but it can if you want to. And on the top row, you have this rice hat, I believe. And they just incorporated it really well. And they also use that piece for the wings. From the back, the ship looks pretty beautiful, except these Technic pins showing, but I just think that's, I mean, you can't really fix that, so I think LEGO did a pretty good job. Other side of the boat is identical, and they have this gate piece, and they use this technique where you just like put it on and then put these pieces on the top so it doesn't fall out, and it is identical on the other side too. And you can move this up and down. I don't know why you would want to, but you can do that. Moving on to the sails, these are really big sails, and they take up like half the ship just by length and they are pretty massive and they are just connected by these little pieces here and i think they look great they're very accurate to the show and the way you can move them is by there's this lever here to pull it up in flight mode just pull this piece down it goes up and if you want it down pull it up pretty simple and if you want to play with the ship just by like putting characters on here or anything it's not a play feature but i figured that you could do it you can just take this off and it won't affect anything to your build except that there's no sails. A lot of deck space. I mean, you can probably fit all the ninja in there. Yeah, all the figures, all the seven figures fit very perfectly inside. And like with their hats and their armor and their like katanas and stuff like that, they can take up a lot of space. So this is a lot of space in like the first deck area. In the second deck kind of area, you have these stairs leading up to that way and you have the stairs leading up to the cabin. You also have this stud shooter. There's this candle piece, and the stud can shoot out. And I think that stud went in the cabin, so um, you can always remove the stud if you want to, and it'll look pretty good. And there are extras of the studs, so if you lose one, you can just replace it with another one. I forgot to say that on the first like part of the deck, there is this dragon hilt piece. There's this long rod and this golden lightsaber hilt. Access the interior of the boat. There's one room underneath. And you can just take this whole thing off and you, to reveal it to inside. There are no stud connections to hold this thing on, but it just fits pretty snug in there. And there is not a whole lot of room, but you can still fit figures in there. You have this training dummy that you can just take out and it looks like this. We have seen something like this in the show. And it's not completely accurate, but I think Lego like, just wanted to put a dummy in there, so. 
This looks pretty nice, actually, so yeah. My camera in there, but there are two clips that you can put your golden weapons or loose staff or like katanas or whatever you want. And you can't access this part because that's where all the mechanisms for the thrusters are. And you can't access that because that's where the mechanisms for this are and like the shaping of the whole thing. You also have this little crate where, which you can just remove and inside it are studs and a teal cheese slope really nice to get. Also had these steps leading up to the cabin and there are no stud connections so you can just fit this right on in without a lot of work. Now let's move on to the final part of the ship, the cabin and the roof. First of all I'm just going to say that these can move back but not very much unless you remove the whole thing and these are stickers so gotta have some precise lining up to do there. Remove the roof. There are four stud connections so it's not that hard. Let's take a good look at this and appreciate the roof Lego did. And this is just really nice. I think this is the best Lego could have done. And this was from the show. It's very bigger, but I mean, I know Lego's not going to do it that big, and I'm and I'm okay with that. And there's these sausage pieces, and Lego used them really well. I really like the sausage pieces, and they used these lightsaber kind of pieces, and they made this oval shape. And this just looks really nice. These are identical to each other, and they are not going to move because there's a clip right here and from the front i just really like the colors on this there are some exo force arms on both sides and this can move down another sausage piece there and you can move this down but the other side is probably more convenient for playability you can just slide this down this is meant for playability and you can just take this thing out and it just clips right back in and there are no stud connections on the inside so it's pretty easy to pull out these are all stickers all four of these and we have this golden katana to hold it in place on the inside we have two silver shurikens and you also get two extras in the set and like i said it's not that hard to push back in push back in closes and that's that this is just a really cool design and you can also fit a minifigure in there if you want to as you can see i just can fit pull right in there i don't know why you would want to do that but i don't know if you can see cole in there but cole is in there you can maybe fit two minifigures but it's just not meant for that but if you want to store minifigures i mean i guess this is a good place and in the cabin area i know it's a little dark but there is this control panel. See it more clearly on the inside. You can just remove this whole thing. Sometimes it's a little harder to remove because I'm using one hand, but it can remove. And you have this orange katana, which you get another extra of. You have the steering wheel. And you have these two stickers. There's one by two stickers. And you have this control panel here, which is something based off the show, except in the show it's much bigger, but I think this is still a pretty good representation of that. And there are steps leading up to it. The sad thing is you can only fit like one minifigure in there. I mean, if you force minifigures in there, I you might be able to fit three, but I mean, one's probably your best bet. And you have this thing. I don't know why it's there. You could easily just put another control panel there, but not, not really complaints with that you can fit another katana in this slot. You see, and if you put the cabin back on, you barely have any room to fit figures. Moving on to this build, this is actually a little dojo. And this is a cool little play feature. You can store more weapons in there. They give you extras of each weapon, except this, I think. And you have this um, Ninjagin language. I don't know what it says, but I mean, this is a cool little thing, but it just takes up so much space in the cabin that you can't really store figures and you can get Nia, I guess. You can, you can take pictures, but other than that, this is kind of pointless, but I I like the thought put into it and I think Lego did a good job on the actual build. To close it up, you can see the lanterns on each side. You can see these lightsaber pieces and I really like the technique they used for this. I like the circular windows. They are on each side and the patterns are just I love it. And there's also this other window on the side, and these can move up and down. Once you put everything back on, it looks like this. And you can store a figure in here if you wanted to. 
it's not gonna stick onto a stud, but I mean, you can hold a figure in there, I guess. Yeah, and that is it for the review of the actual set. Now let's get on to the instructions and the box. Now this is a pretty humongous box. Um, let me just remove these figures. Um, you have the Ninjago Legacy logo. And this is the UK box. And you have all the little play features and whatnot, and you have the background. And it has this thing, and it says featured in season one. And the model does not float, if you didn't know. It has all the minifigures on there. And the only thing is that it's not Lego's fault. It's just the delivering person's fault or whatever. But um, there's like a bunch of scratches on this. Even on the other side. It's a little dense. I ordered it on Zabby, and some other people had problems with this, so I'm not really happy about that. The box itself looks nice, it's just that, I don't know, I'm not a box collector or anything, but I do like my boxes neat, but um, these are just, I don't know, I just don't like that there's these little things on there. The instruction is also massive, like the box too, for an instruction manual, it is very, very thick. And it has the QR code to access the code online. And you have the regular instructions. And on the back, you have the pieces you need. And you have all the little play features. And you have the ads for the new Summer 2020 Ninjago Journey to the Skull Dungeon sets. And like the Skull Dungeon and the Ooze Battle Dragon. I don't see Ooze Battle Dragon, but... Um, yeah, those are the ads for those sets. I forgot to tell you this earlier, but these are all the leftover pieces. I guess the weapons don't really count as extra pieces, but, I mean, they weren't actually in the instructions, so, I mean, I guess they count. And you can replace the swords and everything else. And if you lose, like, these little pieces, you can always just replace them. Overall, I think the set is a great set. And this is my first Destiny's Bounty also, so that probably just adds to it. I really like the build of it and the playability features are there are a whole lot of playability features and like even if you just want to display it it also looks really nice now the size of it it's pretty big too it's not as big as the one in the actual show but if they made it that big it would probably be like 400 dollars. but i mean compared to the older bounty i think this one just like this one this one's like way better and compared to the movie bounty although it is not as big I think the build and like the quality might just beat that and I love the thrusters on it also and I like the sails there are the paper material and yeah that's basically it for this review BMF out